I'm Mark, I'm the creator of Darwin's Choice Before and After and Darwin's Choice, um, together with Elio and Samuel, and I will now shortly explain you all the rules of Darwin's Choice Before and After. Have fun! So let's start with the rule explanation. So, and first I want to set the focus on the new materials we have in this expansion. The, the most uh, um, parts are of course, again, animal cards. A ton of animal cards, even more than in the base game. And we have a ton of new variety in these cards, so the focus is clearly set on prehistoric species. But we also have like species that are critically endangered and endangered, like the leatherback sea turtle, um, because we also want to raise the awareness for these beautiful creatures. So you really get a ton out of this expansion, a ton out of new animal cards, and hopefully all of all of the stretch goal of this campaign will be unlocked. So then all again, and all these cards will be individually. So no um, no no artwork will be included twice. So what do we have more? So we have um, also new biome cards. We have three new biome cards that um, are still existing and we have um, five new prehistoric biomes. These biomes just um, also increase the variety of different biomes. They have a little bit of new um, adaptation combinations and really enrich the whole game. So let's keep two of them. So we have here the land Ice Age landscape and the Jurassic Forest. And I also welcome my two new friends, Woolly Rhinoceros Caterpillar and Para Raccoon. So they have here a beautiful life, they enjoy just to exist and um, yeah, they enjoy it really. <laughs> but there is a plot twist because in this um, ex expansion there are not just prehistoric things but also new things like humankind. So we have human territories. Let's shift them a little bit on the side. So we have a human territory chip, it's called the National Park, and we have 16 human territory cards, um, showing four types of um, human territories. So we have city, four cards. We have industry, four cards. We have suburb, four cards. And we have agriculture for cards. So these are called human territories. Um, so now let's shift the national park on the side. I will explain it later. It's important to know if you play with five biome and um, with five biomes. So if you set up a game with five biomes, you use all of them. And if you just um, have set a game up with three or um, four biomes, then you um, place always the national park and the, um, and fill up the, um, the, the the places with human territories. So, how do these human territories work? And um, they are um, set in place when you prepare the game. So next to each biome, I play and uh, you place a human territory, like I said before. And always the national park is always used. And which of these bi um, human territories you um, want to play with, it's absolutely up to you. So they have a little bit of um, little tweaks and twisters, um, but you can um, absolutely choose them yourselves. It doesn't matter. Just change the ones you want to, um, the ones that you want to play with. So, uh, how does this change the life in our um, in our um, nature here? So, I want to focus first on the agriculture. Um, so, what do we see here? Um, like all other um, human territories, we have four cards. So we have a card with a one, a card with a two, three and four. And if you have a look at these beautiful artworks, you see that um, the artwork changes. So it really gets more depressing, like more, there is a lot of pollution going on here. So we call this steps nature index. So this is nature index one. This means that humans are very friendly to nature, that they welcome nature. And we have here a very sad place where humans didn't respect nature, so it really develops. We have the same here with the city. We start with a beautiful green city and end with a polluted um, smog, um, um, city full of smog. So this is the nature index, these four cards. And how they work and how they um, develop, I will explain in a second. 
Then we, what do we have here? Um, this is a special icon. It's only depicted on the agriculture sector. It just means that Para Raccoon is, can be um, sleep very well because he can't get eaten. Because here it's not allowed for a carnivore to eat a herbivore or an omnivore. So Para Raccoon has a beautiful life here. It's only depicted on the agriculture section. So you can see it here, city doesn't have one. So then what are these, what is this? So these are the waste conditions. So if you fulfill these conditions, like have a minimal amount of two hearts, then you get a waste. So we have a look here at our para raccoon. He doesn't have two hearts, so he just eats normal plants. So he has a good life without waste. And here, um, we have a look at the woolly um, rhinoceros caterpillar and here in the city you, it's, um, you get a waste token if you have a maximum of one heart. He has two hearts so um, it eats normal plant food. Whoa, perfect. So, but um, how would this change if these species want to travel around and have a great journey? So they tram the para raccoon wants to see the ice age landscape and this one wants to see the Jurassic forests. So how does this change? So now the woolly rhinoceros fulfill these waste conditions and gets one food chips. So there are um, one waste chip in each game in each copy of Darwin's Choice Before and After, you have 33 of these waste chips. So the Gambuli rhinoceros um, caterpillar would eat one of these waste chips and one of plants. So it really um, complements one um, plant food and will be complemented with a waste food. And here would be exactly the same because the para raccoons fulfills the, these waste conditions and now only eats wastes and that's okay um, okay for him um, because um, it's n um, at the moment not a bad thing to have wastes yes there are some uh, event cards that really make waste a problem but at the moment it's totally fine for these two guys to also eat waste because they, that means that, see, that they also can live um, in the um, close to um, humans and eat something from their garbage so, and now, how, um, what do we have here? What are the last things here? So we have here, this is called the food limitation because the more the nature index drops, the less land is there for the, for the animals and the less food is left in the biomes. So this is like a hard limitation for the biomes. Here the same. So how does this work? So here, for example, we would place four plant food and for meat food. So let's do this. We have here for plant food and we have here for meat food. And how would it be here? So here it would, um, it says a maximum of six plants and then um, here is five plants. So that's okay because it, um, the, this is no, um, this no problem between um, having a maximum of six and this has only, okay, we would place here like, um, five and here it says a maximum of four meat and here it says five meat so um, we wouldn't place five here but four because this is dominant the, the food limitation always dominates the, the, the depicted food in the biomes so and how does this um, change now okay so how do, do these um, so I take away all the things here because then we have a clearer look on everything. So how do they change? So um, the, the, the second thing that is very new to Darwin's Choice Before and After are the human event cards. There are 14 of these event cards. They have for, uh, three different type of backs. You have one with, um, you have uh, five with a house on the back. You have five with an apartment building on the back and you have four with a skyscraper on the back. So in the beginning of a game, in the very beginning, when you set up the game, you build a pile with one um, house card on top, then one um, apartment building, and then one skyscraper building. So this is our event card pile for the whole game, because you only need three cards if you play four eras. So this one will be drawn in the first transition phase, this one in the second transition phase and this one in the 
third and last transition phase. So what um, is new uh, with these cards? So these cards um, first have 40 new effects different effects than before than we had in the old event cards. And it's also very important if you play with human territories and uh, then you always play with human event cards. So the old event cards stay in the box. So um, if you play with human territories, please, um, we strongly recommend play with the human event cards. If you don't play um, with the human territories, just use the, the old event cards. So, what is different on these event cards? So they have an effect like before and they have an icon here in the left upper corner. It's either a smoke icon or it is, a, I have to look one, um, look for a card, or it is an icon with a tree. So a tree means that the nature index rises and, um, and they are very rare. And there is a smog icon and that means that the nature index falls. So if we would example, for example, would draw in the first transition phase this card, all and um, all um, human territories, that means not just one, all would decrease by one nature index level. So you take this card and place it on the side, you take this card and place it on the side. If we would again draw a card with a smog icon, voila, we would place the second card on the side. And as you can see, the food limitation um, decreases and decreases and decreases. And it really gets important um, for your species, for the para raccoon and the woolly rhinoceros, that they get waste. Because it's important to um, be able to live near the human, because the human um, territory increases and increases and increases and um, really takes away all the food. And if you draw, if you are lucky and you draw an event card in a transition phase with a tree, then a card goes up. So then we have again, with, um, again, more food in these um, biomes. And what is there um, more to um, tell about um, about this? So the thing, uh, what I want to um, to show you is that um, the suburb area, so to make the whole rule explanation um, complete, has a different kind of food kind of waste condition. Um, with a maximum of three competitive strength, you get a waste. And in the industry with a minimum of five competitive strength, you get a waste. So they ha all have a different um, condition to get the, the waste that your species needs to um, to um, survive if the food supply goes down and down and down. So the, the, the importance of, of the food waste really decreases um, and increases by time. And yeah, that's um, practically it with um, the new game mechanics. So we have these um, new event cards that um, change the nature index um, of these new human territories. And um, um, in um, for the ending, I also want to explain you how this national park works. Like I said, the national park is always placed. Um, from the others you can, um, you can choose, but the um, national park is always placed. The national park is placed, and that's important, not on the side of a biome, it's placed on a biome. So like this. So like the Na Woolly Rhinoceros would have a very good day because now it's living in a national park. And maybe the Para Raccoon would also join and they would have a good life together. But there is one little plot twist because everything stays the same. There is not a food requirement or not a new adaptation like um, and like uh, if the biome changes or like a food limitation with uh, human territory. No, there is a new requirement. It's um, and it's an upper limit for um, animal species. So it's not allowed that more than four animal species live in this biome. Or if you play one versus one, it's not allowed to have more than three animal species in this biome. So you would place it here. And so how would you now um, would decide which species are in and which are out. So you can place more than five, um, four species here, but in the phase checking requ uh, the requirements of each scoring phase, all species that outreach this number die out. And it's decided 
from the adaptation. So the four most adapted species survive, and the ones that um, are not in this um, in this four um, in this uh, ranking in the four places with the highest adaptation die out. And to um, complete the rules, we also have a pets card, and we have this um, little um, sh um, arrow shaped um, chips. These arrow shaped chips and the pets card um, come into play when a certain um, event card is drawn, human event card, and it's everything like all the event card is precisely explained in the rule book. So please have a look at the rule book if you want to see each and every um, event card explained. And there, um, I have to mention um, that there is also um, two new um, cards for the child-friendly mode, but uh, um, again this is perfectly explained in the rule book. Um, so to sum everything up, um, we have a ton of new um, animal cards. So really they bring a lot of new variety into the game, a lot of prehistoric, endangered and um, dinosaurs, uh, endangered species and dinosaurs. Then we have new biomes, we have the new um, hu um, hu and we have the new cards, human territories with waste that really bring into a game a new plot um, twist, a new game mechanic and then we also have these new event cards from which you build uh, a pile of a house card, an apartment house card and a skyscraper card. And I hope you enjoyed this rule exp uh, explanation of mine together with my friends Wooly Rhinoceros and Para, um, para Raccoon, I really thank these two that they um, volunteered in this rule explanation. So thanks for watching and have fun with Dorian's choice before and after.